I want to spend a little bit of time putting the record straight about the world's fastest talker record that I hold. I'm doing this from memory, this is unscripted, so I have to go from memory. I have given it a little bit of thought about what I'm going to say, but it's mainly just going from memory. So if I pause and stutter a bit, I do apologise about that. It all started way back in 1990, that's 27 years ago, and it started as a bit of a joke between myself and some work friends. I uh, actually heard somebody talking fast on the radio at work, and a couple of my friends said, well, you've always been able to talk fast, do you reckon you could break that world record? And I thought to myself, well, this is a bit of a joke. There's no way that I'm a world record breaker. But I listened to the guy and what he had to say, and I found the piece that he used to break the world record with, and I had a little bit of practice, and to my utter surprise, I was pretty close to his world record time, which really surprised me. And from there I thought, well, if I'm that close to the world record time, with a little bit of practice, maybe I can actually break the world record. So I spent hmm, maybe five months learning how to talk fast and picking my speed up. It actually was quite easy, um, and I actually got to above his record speed. Then I sort of hit a wall that I couldn't get much past his record speed, but I thought, oh well, let, let's let's give it a go. Um, my efforts have been noticed by a television production company, and they invited me onto their show. It was a kids' show, actually, a Saturday morning kids' show. They invited me onto their show to see if I could break the world record. Now, when I went on to the show, the world record was about 520 words per minute. What I aimed for when I was on the show to break the record, and this was done live, what I was actually aiming for was I was actually aiming for 550 words per minute, <clears throat> which would, you know, ensure that I, was, I had a good, decent margin above the existing world record. However, something happened on the show that day. It was, it was, I think it was the, the first time I'd ever appeared on television. I'm, I'm not an entertainer by nature. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of these people that does anything to appear on TV. And I, I was a bit nervous. And I think the adrenaline got me going. So much so that not only did I meet my 550-word target, I actually found that I'd stopped speaking at around 52 seconds. The whole thing was... The whole script that I had was for a minute long. But I actually finished it after 52 seconds, and we sat down and we worked the timings out, and it turned out that I'd actually done 620 words per minute. Now, I've seen a lot of the comments on my YouTube videos. I, I tend not to answer them, because to be quite honest, most of you are just talking out of your arses. I can tell you that it was checked using proper equipment. Um, I believe the machine was called a clarifier, and what happens is, is the voice is recorded, the pitch is remodulated, it's slowed down, and every word is checked for clarity by expert speech pathologists. All right? These are not people off the street. These are people that are experts in their field. Turns out that out of the 614-odd words that I spoke... I mispronounced just 12, so they disallowed those 12, meaning that I'd spoken something like 600 words in 53 seconds. When they'd done the maths, that equated to a speed of 637 words per minute. No, it didn't. It equated to a speed of about 620 words per minute, all told. And that generated a new world record, which Guinness naturally honoured me with. A couple of weeks after that, a young lady in New York, Frank Capo, broke my existing world record. A couple of weeks after that, I had the opportunity to demonstrate my talent again, and again, the conditions were so right that this time I broke her record, leaving me with the world record for the second time. This time, the time was judged at 637 words per minute. After that, the previous record holder to both myself and Fran started kicking off. And he made such a stink about it that what Guinness decided to do was they decided to get the four fastest talkers in the world together in New York to have a competition between the four of them to see who really was the fastest talker. This competition involved each of us being given the same passage from a book that none of us had seen before with just 12 hours notice 
to memorise and practice this piece. Then we went live on television, and I think it was Good Morning America. I've never been able to find the video of this. I'm pretty sure it was recorded, but I've never been able to find the video of this. I'm sure it was Good Morning America. We went on live, and all four of us had a talk-off. No, it wasn't four of us, it was three of us. There's a story there, I'll come to that in a second. It was three of us. It was myself, John Mashita, and Frank Capo. Sean Shannon, who has the record for the world's fastest recital of... Shakespeare's Hamlet soliloquy was invited to take part as well however it's my understanding that he declined because the only thing that he can do fast is Hamlet soliloquy he's not like me or Fran or John who can naturally talk fast for any uh, any passage in the English language so he declined so they just left three of us anyway during this live contest it turns out that we were recorded the specialist equipment was used it was judged by speech pathologists and everything else and I won. I was not only the fastest out of the three of us, but I was also the most legible. This generated a yet another world record, which Guinness did put in the book for a year, but then they removed it. So I actually hold two world records, one for a rehearsed passage and one for a previously unrehearsed passage. Now, it's been 27 years since then, and since then, neither of those world records have been broken. I still hold them. So... To me, that's quite an achievement. Other people, that's nothing. I mean, like I said, this started out as a bit of a joke, a bit of a gag, a bit of a party trick. I'm not an entertainer. It's not something that I, I do for a living. Seeing the things on my YouTube channel, there's a lot of people that think that I talk gibberish when I'm talking fast. Well, y you would do. I mean, th the thing is, right, the internet is full of experts. The internet makes experts. They're actually experts that don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about. I mean... To give you an example of why it sounds gibberish and why you think I'm sounding gibberish is when I'm talking at world record speed, I'm blasting out ten and a quarter words per second. That's faster than you can think about it. What that means is by the time you've thought about a word that I've said and registered a word that I've said, I'm five or six words ahead of you, so you're always playing catch-up. So it means that if you've heard three words and registered three words, I'm actually 15 words ahead of you. So you'll never ever get to understand exactly what I'm saying unless you're extremely familiar with the passage that I'm saying. And trust me, I've been checked by experts. The words are there. I'm not slurring them. I'm not missing them. I'm saying each and every word complete. So all you that think that I'm just talking rubbish and just talking, you know, making it up as I'm going along, I'm not. It's been checked. It's all there. You can argue about it till the cows come home, but there's only one... By virtue of the fact that I have two unbroken world records, OK, for 27 years, there is only one expert in fast talking, and that's me, OK? There is no other expert. If any of you were experts at fast talking, then you would have the world record, but you don't. I do. End of story. Now we're going to talk about Shakespeare and Hamlet's soliloquy. What Guinness decided to do is, and I, I sort of don't blame them, is they decided that there was no official world record body in any way for fast talking. So what they thought they would do is they would try and find something that made it easy for everybody to do, and they chose the Hamlet soliloquy from Shakespeare, the one that starts to be or not to be. And I've got to admit, I didn't like that very much. I didn't like that very much for several reasons. And I'll, I'll explain the reasons why I didn't like it and why I've never attempted this world record or attempted to take this world record. First and foremost, right, that's, that's Sean Shannon's bit of fame. It's, you know, he did it. Fair play to him. Good luck. Why should I take it off of him? I already had a world record that I was acknowledged for. And as I said right at the start of this video, this is not something that motivates me, fame, fortune, or record holding. I'm, I'm just not that interested in it. And I thought, well, that, that's his piece of the action. Let's let, 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 let him have it. I don't need to take it off of him. I'm pretty sure I could, but I don't need to. The other problem I had with Guinness's decision was that you can actually say the Shakespeare soliloquy in 22 seconds or 24 seconds. Well, how does that equate to a speed of words per minute? That's like claiming that, say, Usain Bolt, because he can run 100 metres in 9 seconds, can actually run a marathon in 45 minutes. So that's a bit crazy. If you can have a world record for talking words per minute, you need to at least speak for a minute. I came pretty close to it. I actually spoke for 52 seconds. As I explained earlier, this is something that I intended to go on for a minute. It's just the conditions were right and I got faster. That's my first problem with it. My second problem with it was, as I said before, it's Sean Shannon's record. He should keep it. I'm not interested in it. 
Third problem is that I speak English. I speak 21st century English, or as a case of 1990, 20, 20th century English. I speak English as it's spoken today. I don't speak English as Shakespeare spoke it. Nobody in this country speaks English as Shakespeare spoke it. So straight away, that would mean that almost everybody was disadvantaged by this because they would have to learn what in fast talking terms is a completely different language they have to learn words that they're not familiar with so i thought okay so it goes on for 24 seconds it's not english as i speak it today and it's somebody else's world record and at that point i thought right okay that's it I, you know I, I i'm done with the world record that there was a bit of fun it, it like i said i'm not an entertainer i didn't do this for money it doesn't. I, I don't get motivated yet. I've, I've had some success with being the world's fastest talker, but I've never earned money out of it. Not once, I think, I've earned any money out of it at all. No, I'm lying. I did once get a... I did once manage to make a successful series of radio adverts for Sainsbury supermarkets. That's the only time I made money out of it. That was about 1994. It wasn't that much. Um, but what I have had out of it is I've had travel. I mean, I've been to many countries in the world that I would never have been to because of it. And I, I appreciate that. I've been to the States uh, half a dozen times. And in fact, I've been, to, I've been as far away from my home as it's possible to get without leaving the planet. And all this was down to fast talking where I've appeared on television programs and, and, and done things throughout the world. Again, not for profit and, and not for fame and fortune because that isn't something that motivates me. Um, two years ago was the last time I did anything with fast talking, and that was for Team GB when uh, the United Kingdom athletes team was going into the uh, Commonwealth Games. And I knew while I was doing that, I knew that my voice was my big letdown. I'd never be able to achieve the speeds that I could achieve before. That's if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I have cancer, and that cancer has affected my ability to talk fast. It's, it's affected my ability to talk in any way. In fact, as you hear, I mean, we're 11 minutes into this video, and already my voice is starting to go croaky for that reason. Um, do you know, I totally, <laughs> I totally, I totally fucking lost the plot there about what I was going to say. I just there's other people parked up over here looking at me like I'm talking to myself. But oh fuck them, who cares what they think? Um, so yeah, that, that that's the story of it. So it's not something that I ever took seriously. I I see a lot of your comments. I see a lot of people that are rude about it. But you know, I really don't care. You know, you might hold John Machita up as your hero. Great, yeah, he's he's a professional entertainer. This is what he did for a living. You know, I don't want any of that. It really, really doesn't motivate me. So I just let it go. I mean, I, I do, about once a month, I get somebody contacting me and say, can you uh, can you come and do your fast talking bit on our television show? And because of my cancer, I've turned every one of them down because I'm never going to do it. I can't even demonstrate it in these videos now. I, I, you know, and the other thing that really annoyed me about all these offers is everybody expected me to break a world record on their television show. Well, you know, the people couldn't grasp the concept that by its very nature, a world record is something unique. If I could break the world record, I would have broken it and I did break it, but it doesn't mean that I can keep breaking it again. To use Usain Bolt as an analogy, that's like expecting Usain Bolt to break the 100 metres world record every time he appears. You know, it's not going to happen. The conditions for a world record have to be absolutely right for it to happen. And these are conditions that I've never duplicated again. And it's now 27 years since I did it. I'm never going to do it again. I can still talk fast when I want to, but it does take it out of me quite seriously. So I don't do it anymore. And I've withdrawn from everything that's to do with fast talking. Right, I've waffled on for nearly 14 minutes on this particular video. I hope that's given you a sense of what I'm about and why I've never pushed myself as the world's fastest talker. And I think I'm going to let that drop there. You know, I've, I've got the two world records. They've remained unbroken. I don't care what anybody says. That's something that I achieved. And I'm proud of it and I'm happy with it. And... I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I don't know where I'm going to go with these videos. I'm just going to make them up as I go along, I think. Um, I'm not sure what my next one's going to be, but I just had to get some of those things about the world's fastest talking out of the way first. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.